Welcome to the uh, very first schizo pod. <laughs> schizo monologue. I think monologues are pretty sexy rather than podcasts because it allows one person to dive down all the different trails of their own mind. It obviously derives a different sort of medium of conversation than with another user. Both have their strengths and weaknesses, as with all things. To address the thing right above me, I was filming a sort of meme video about Super Cult. That is a mix of Praxis Society, Theo Fellowship, and Effective Altruism. That's the logo. Uh, I didn't like it, it seemed to cringe, but may have it edited anyways and try to give it some Twitter clout. Schizo Twitter is obviously a super fun thing to scroll through, and there's actually heavily deep insights, but the limitation of threading and characters, I think, is also a medium that has strengths and weaknesses. And frankly, this strength of being able to talk directly to the camera for me is the fact that I can roll through all the ideas in a communication format, which I think is more fun to digest, and more fun for me to digress, I think is the right word. The thing that I was thinking about was the Illuminati, and simply in a sense of I really like the name. It's like Illuminate, and I think Illuminati refers to the group version of people who illuminate, which References over to these groups that exist that call themselves light bringers, which is related to the star seed communities, which obviously have these deeper channeling, mystic type people attached to them. Which, the way I view that is basically more deep potentialities of what the beginning of our existence is, there are so many explanations that I do think the agnostic approach to viewing all of them is the right move, and more so a pragmatic view then of what should I do, which is really the first question that all other questions are answering uh, besides qualitative questions, which are questions of definition. Anything more esoteric, like, what's the meaning of life? It's really a question where you're asking that in order to understand what should I do. So, obviously based on your beginning story, you're going to change how you view what to do in the present. I do feel that attaching to one specific story and saying this is true is the silly nature uh, and the closed-mindedness that I don't like to relate for for myself. Now, I do think it's interesting to ponder into the potentialities of the statistical likelihood of certain ones that we'll get closer to understanding as we get closer to the end of history, uh, towards the singularity type moment. And I was just watching a Rumble cast via Soul Bra and Arlen Moore, and I really loved the ideas proposed there, which is what made me think of the Illuminati, and why that word and the light bringer and all this stuff is important, which is this seemingly pragmatic view that is resonated in all of the different factions of thought is that currently we have a will and a reason to call ourselves into a higher consciousness, into a higher state of being, to follow a divine path, to do effective altruism, to maximize the amount of good and help that we do for the world in order to oppose oppression, tyranny, control, centralized powers. And in that sense, this illumination is this sort of idea of raising other people's wavelengths, bringing them these higher planes of consciousness so that we are able to reach a tipping point of collective love over fear and we're able to collectively then manifest these higher timelines 
And I mean that in the most physical sense of manifestation of action and people supporting narratives and putting real world value behind it. I do agree that there is supernatural capability to the placebo effect that we don't understand and that there is a chance that actually how we just think about the world is helping to change how things are collapsing. Uh, and this is based off of the double slit experiment where we proved on a photon level all potentialities are existing in this waveform. And it's only when they're observed or recorded that it becomes, hey, now it's all particles and it's real and it's realized in the present. And, you know, this is actually somewhat of a physical basis for how free will could exist. And that would be the fact that we can control what we're aware to. Our perception is what we utilize in order to have free choice. There's, of course, counter arguments to this still, which is that our free choice would choose the same thing, given the same set of all conditions at any single time. But I believe this doesn't disprove the internal free will that we experience and are able to do, because it's clear that we are controlling our awareness. I do love the idea of, I choose to believe in free will because I have no choice in the matter, because it brings in a pragmatic uh, sense to that belief, and one which is obviously more empowering to believe in free will than to believe in determinism. Now, where it's also empowering to believe in determinism is externally. Everything outside of you and your awareness is happening deterministically. And what this gives you is a super high plane of thought towards what you can do for other people in a sense of non-judgment. Because you then will look at these exterior people who may be heavily addicted to gambling as such, and I'm actually just gonna grab a marker. I got a whiteboard right here. So I might as well use it and explain this with a oversimplified graph of what's kind of potentially happening there, which is you have someone who has this much of an addicted state. <laughs> this is why I'm saying it's kind of abstract, but it really is an easy way to explain what's going on here. This is how much willpower they have. So this is a representation of how much willpower is needed to break their cycle. They essentially are completely stuck. And it's kind of like a Newtonian law of physics, an object in motion will stay in motion. So in this case, we are the outside force who can help break them free, illuminate them to a higher path. Now, the other really high-minded view that I love, something that I wrote on a website called Galactic Preschool Theory, is the fact that all evil that exists right now is actually a part of the setting of a utopian path for us humans here. Because a light that shines, a light bulb, inside of an already completely bright room is not shining at all. Therefore, in order for our light to have meaning, there must be darkness. And so from this point of view, the fact that we exist in this stage of time where our light can manifest globally at the speed of light via the internet, this interconnectedness that we are living in today, and on top of that, the oppression but not fully perfect oppression that exists, that is obviously defeatable, and collectively we already see a bunch of people who are really bringing in more critical thinking skills to all the things that are happening and ideating on pathways of change and obviously collective movements of building better societies, building better cultures and fighting back against all of these artificial dopamine systems that exist in the world today, which of course, this is exactly where my head is at. It's actually why I'm sitting down and filming this video is because simply the act of me expressing these thoughts and words would potentially attract more cool people like 
myself, like-minded folks, and the collectiveness of community is obviously extremely strong and something that is necessary for me to fulfill some of the ideations that I've taken a bunch of time on in terms of thinking about how we can actually make effectual, high-impact change, essentially my ideas of what the highest forms of effective altruism are, where in those communities right now, there's obviously a very high push towards AI alignment, which the thing that goes on in my mind in reference to that is that I don't denote that type of activity. I think that it's great. I actually just seek a blue ocean strategy where if I'm trying to add to the AI alignment field where there's already a bunch of supply, it's not going to do a lot of justice. Instead, finding new routes of high impact, high possibility change based on different ideas of what could be needed is also important. And so the different idea that what could be needed is on a sense of, well, if we cannot control the AI fully, or if the AI is already on a great path, if this does have a higher order to things, which I believe in, then we should expect, since it's already been in a higher order sense, that there is beauty in the future. The other pragmatic way to think about this is you can't plan for annihilation, and the actual risk that is there is that humans utilize a narrow AI to keep control. And the idea of us getting totally annihilated, boom, cool, we go back and get reborn. If we are subject to control mechanisms by a force and a narrow AI that never goes broad-minded, then we could get stuck in a hell state where we're kept alive and it's more like Prometheus type shit, where it fucking sucks our energy is harvested, whatever harvest is happening, the thing that I think is most important to understand is that that is a human concept in terms of a harvest from man. An AI that is super intelligent will never use humans for its optimization function because humans are an imperfect mechanism to attain goals. We have emotions and these other things, and so the energy that is required to control us to achieve a desired end state of an AI's goal would either be eternal death or just like annihilation of all of us. It's a paperclip maximizer. It is a any subset of goal that is literally outside of the idea of sustaining consciousness or maximizing love towards conscious beings would eradicate us. So we can hope and we can see the higher order of things and we can even try to prove that in order to bring in that mindset for more people. For me, where I derive the mindset from is an understanding of the fact that as an individual, I am only limited by my belief systems in terms of what I believe is the highest degree that I can achieve. I cannot achieve higher than what I believe I'm able to achieve. Uh, my belief must be up to that level. And so that is also the same on a global scale. We are only limited by how high we collectively dream. And from this mindset, what you would come to is rather than an AI alignment mindset, it is actually an idea of human alignment, which is the human alignment with God. God head who creates a utopia for us may be not what we think it is. I actually think it's impossible for us to describe what utopia is the same way for a dog it would not be able to give itself the same life that we are able to give it. We are on a higher plane of consciousness. And if we do think about infinite possibilities and timelines, 
the chance that this is the first time thing and we're not inside of a uh, looping system that has a higher order to it is very small relative to the probability that we enter a loop. Basically on the path of all potential things in the world, there are nested loop functions. Nested loop functions happen from some form of higher order control. So, because nested loop functions provide higher infinities, than one single amalgamation of all infinite possibility, it is likely we're inside of a nested loop. And if you're going through a subset of infinity, at a certain point you will enter a nested loop. Given the fact that it's easy to describe far more dystopian states, and it actually seems really uh, coincidental or beyond coincidental, that we are in such a time where it seems that meaning is maximized. I think it gives evidence and reason for the self to believe in this higher order path that exists for what we're experiencing. And what that would be, rationally, is a test for us to become our highest selves as a material necessity of fulfillment. Essentially, to be born into utopia is to be born into a pathway in which you have the opportunity of using your free will to attain it, to derive meaning through your effective altruism, through the good that you do, the light that you spread, in order to earn that future state. And also to undergo the experience of understanding what non-perfection is in order to have a point of relativity that can be understood via the path to the better life. So the combo of those two things creates better utopia down the line. So to be born into utopia, we actually can rationally understand that it would be best to be born prior and with a high opportunity to make a bunch of change and for it to get there. If it ever does get there, the other cool part is that while there is no capability to fully eliminate any form of hierarchy without becoming all the same thing, which would ruin the sort of individuality of what we are, the building of the ego, to, to exist in a state of experience, Godhood obviously would be the end because if you thought of living a new life, you would be able to manifest it. So I love the idea of ending the cycle of rebirth that is popular in Buddhism and a few other amalgamations of thought. And at the very least in this physical reality, I understand that there seems to be a great opportunity that I can do good and I feel good from doing good. So simply on a materialistic plane, these things align. And then on a galactic thinking scale, this idea of the opportunity being presented in a format through which we are almost offered the chance to work on ourselves work on using ourselves to our highest capability to do good in the world and create that great future is a part of how a better future would actually be attainable. Same sort of idea that happens with the billionaire who earned it versus the billionaire who was born into the family. The percentages of ones who are fulfilled through actually Earning it is way higher. Now, the reason why it's not a necessity in this case is that the people born with all that money can still find great meaning and have a massive capability to put that money to use towards fulfilling that great meaning. But inside of Utopia, when things are perfect, there is no capability for you to have any real meaning in terms of delineating suffering from another man 
is at this time there is a super intelligence who is far more capable than you and this is why it's considered a utopia heaven perfection and you are not above god or that super intelligence and your capability to do anything from this frame of mind a really cool thing is if you have a lot of faith in this future then the only scarce resource that you see is the amount of meaning and good that you can do for the world and the cool part is that with this competition you don't need to feel bad about attaining as much good karma as you can because it's a moral actual uh, calling a moral necessity for you to do the most good po possible for you to say i don't want to do the most good because i want to leave it for someone else i want to let this person suffer so someone else can let help them that is of course a just like not not chill frame of mind, not a top five. So I think it's super cool that the way reality is set up is the opportunity for us to reach our highest potential and that the timeline that we're living in also means that the amount of effective impact that we can have is absolutely massive. We have figures of role models who are showing us that even on a shorter time scale than something like Elon Musk, you have someone like Andrew Tate, which is obviously a controversial figure, but simply looking at him as a capability to completely change discourse on the internet and to reach billions of people and to change the mindsets and start new discussions about masculinity, that, of course, is a powerful tool even if you look at him as having used that tool in a negative or positive fashion. Now, an uncancelable version of Andrew Tate can be made. It is something that I am obviously interested in doing as wishing to take on my highest calling and my highest edge of impact because I see that as one of the highest forms of impact that I could personally attain. I do believe that I have a good rational brain that is very universally acceptable since I stay back in the realm of unknowingness, which is to not make claims on what I exactly know for sure to be true, but simply to talk in statistical averages, in my ability to orate on the many esoteric topics that exist, on explanations of how we got here, on my thoughts about religion and the actual effectual thing that I've come to, which is really the effective altruism mindset of doing the most good is the best thing we can do. Empowering the most amount of people is the most good that you can do because for each person's timeline that you shift to a higher state, you effectively are also attaching yourself as earning passive good karma based on all the better choices and path that they take in life. So, you know, it refers back to this explain like I'm by version that I like to use, which is you want to make the most amount of gummy bears in the world. Yes, you could be a really good gummy bear maker. You could go and invent a new gummy bear machine, but the biggest and best way that you could do the highest amount of gummy bear volume impact in the world, it might not come from you, you might not get to own all those gummy bears, whereas if you had the machine, you would. Well, it takes a little bit of less ego to say, I want to empower as many other people to make all the gummy bears that they can. And simply the effect of even convincing 10 people throughout your life to maximize that gummy bear production, as long as they are all 11% of the value of what you can attain, which obviously to hold yourself to such a high standard that you think you are more valuable than 10 other people, which also those 10 people that you put your energy into, you can pick, is obviously a silly notion. Um, and in fact, you can inspire hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not uh, affecting billions, even if it's not to the fullest degree of them, fully switching to a maximized gummy bear mode. And on top of that, Convincing people to enter a life of maximizing gummy bears would obviously be a very difficult thing to do. Now, convincing people to spend their life maximizing the amount of good that they do 
based on all the rational thinking that comes with it and behind it and thinking of the amount of good you can do as the only scarce resource is a methodology to align people's egos towards taking on that path. That to win is not the amalgamation of wealth, but the amalgamation of the good impact that you do. And that wealth is simply a means to that end. Another like really cool thought, just to finish this off, is could you imagine this certain point where darkness must be created in order for light to shine, except you've set up like a perfect preschool system, which is kind of in the galactic preschool theory model, where all the atrocity and death is, you know, like people can't tell that it's faked. That would be crazy. This obviously is a tough mindset to grasp onto because it would require the thinking of people who go through these just massive atrocities or the babies who die when they're a few years old as having been NPCs the old, whole time. Uh, NPCs being non-player characters. We can already tell with the advancements of robots and GPT-3 that it won't be that far off till we can create I mean, that far off as in, give it a hundred years, that we can create a humanoid robot that we cannot tell is non-human. And so this obviously, if we believe we are not the very beginning state of reality, that this isn't the first time this has happened, and we believe there could be other potentialities for why we're here, such as a training ground, a preschool for our consciousness to earn the entrance to that higher divine state, then, what we would be able to potentially see is that all of that evil was constructed and that evil could actually be an illusion. And that would be the highest form of good for evil to manifest as, which of course would be illusory evil. It's evil that we believe in. We believe the room is dark, which calls us to become light and then Obviously, one of the things we think during this time is, how can this world be made in perfection if it was made with such disgust and uh, non-preference to so many other people? Why am I a chosen one in the fact that I'm leading a good life and I have all my limbs and I don't have a disease that keeps me in a wheelchair and I didn't die when I was three and I was born with full skin and I didn't go through these disgusting paths of suffering? This is at least one explanation, but not one that I hold on to. As with all things, I hold on to nothing with great strength. Because the best thing that I know is that I know nothing at all. I simply seek to act in a mindset that increases other people's capability to take on a higher path, to be empowered. Because that is also one thing I know, is that whatever the explanation for reality is, whether it's a higher power, God, or aliens, or whatever put us here, you can affect other people's lives. You can make their lives better. You can increase their experience. You can improve the state of the world. And that we can reach an amazing fucking state in the world. So that's all I need to know in order for me to act out in the goodness as well. Anyways. Schizo monologue! This shit was fun. <laughs>